four. There we go. Just wanted to start that recording. A little bit about the Harlem School of the Arts. Again, welcome. HSA empowers youth to reach their full potential in the arts, education, and life through interdisciplinary arts learning that celebrates the rich complexity of their community. I'm James C. Horton, president of the Harlem School of the Arts, and I'm really, really honored to be here with you today um, during this year's Black History Month. So a little bit about our founder, Dorothy Maynard, who was an absolute superwoman, and believe it or not, who was an opera singer who found the Harlem School of the Arts in the basement of St. James Church, which is right next door to us on St. Nicholas and 140th Street. Uh, she founded the school in 1964 in the church where her husband was a pastor, and then later raised $2 million dollars to build a 37,000 square foot facility, probably not even 500 feet away on the same block in which she incorporated every single artistic discipline under one roof. And here we are today, almost 60 years later. Uh, Dorothy Maynard was a visionary, I think one of the original Afrofuturists and building a foundation, a legacy for young people from this community to continue to engage and find their creative voices uh, in the name of just becoming the best version of themselves, always striving toward excellence and artistic achievement, as well as their overall life achievement. And so, like I said, we are joined today by Ms. Yolanda Wins, HSA Music Chair. Uh, I am not going to read to you her full bio, but I just want to tell you some highlights about the, the standard of excellence that Yolanda has in terms of how she works with HSA students. Uh, Yolanda has coached several young people who have gone on to win Grammys, appear on major television shows, and who just have amazing careers in the arts. Uh, Yolanda also has had a career on Broadway and is a ridiculously talented vocalist herself, as well as somebody who I think of as truly a master teacher in this space. Yolanda has been with the Harlem School of the Arts for roughly about six years and is our music chair, meaning that she leads all of our music programming, working with vocal students, musical theater students, as well as those students who are in our jazz band learning um, traditional instrumentation. So Yolanda, I am honored to be here with you today. I'm going to stop talking. I'm turning the keys over to you. I cannot wait to see what you have in store for us. Um, take it away. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Horton, for inviting me and the other chairs to celebrate Black History Month um, through our journeys. And today I am going to talk to you uh, about the journey through music. And I chose the legacy of Dorothy Maynard um, to uh, compare it to vocal technique um, and just a little bit about her and this wonderful woman. Um, Ms. Maynard, right in the height of the civil rights movement, 1960s, 1964, she had a vision to create a safe space where the children of the Harlem community could come and be exposed to excellence in the arts and exposed to excellence in arts training. And, you know, this was a time when she herself as a black woman did not have the right to vote and did not have really any rights. But she had this vision, she had this goal, this dream within herself that she would build an institution specifically for arts education. And yes, as Mr. Horton said, it started in the basement of the church where her pastor, uh, her husband was the pastor of the church. And that just wasn't enough for her. Um, she saw a space, she saw a building, um, and this building that I stand in, um, matter of fact, the Dorothy Maynard Hall, named uh, after her, um, was built from the ground up, and she sought after the best um, architect to build Harlem School of the Arts um, and made sure that it was 
you know, uh, conducive to the time of the Harlem uh, community. So it was built like a fort where the children would come in and fill the safe space. And I'm told that she was always at the front door just to welcome the children in. And she was the sergeant of arms to make sure that they were protected. So a little bit about the connection with vocal coaching, which I enjoy doing, and Dorothy Main, I decided to connect the two. And the first thing I wanna talk about is being focused. Uh, Dorothy Maynard was focused in her vision when she decided to create this space. And just like that, we have to be focused. We have to be focused in our breath. We have to be focused in our tones. We have to be focused to tell a story, um, focus. And so I just would like to introduce my friend here, Mr. Charles Duke, he's, who's gonna accompany me today. Um, and we're gonna do some breathing exercises and I want you to do them with me. Um, we're gonna use the four count breaths and we're gonna sip and take all the air that we can in four counts and then exhale in four counts. And so we're gonna sip like we're sipping through the straw and we're gonna focus on the breath, focus. Um, so we're gonna sip and in four, ready, begin. And two, three, four, hold it and out. Three. Well, let's do two more. Deep breath. Really connect you. Really focus you. Okay, one more time. Take the breath. As you're sipping, quarter, hold it. And then let it out. Two, three, four. Great. One more time. Okay, taking the breath. Hold it. And then let it out. Two, three, four. And you're staying focused on the breath. Uh, many times when I have gone for auditions, um, you know, being a New Yorker, always rushing to get everywhere, um, we tend to hyperventilate instead of really taking those deep breaths. And anytime you're nervous, the uh, nerves will literally take your breath away. And so what I do in an audition and what I recommend to all of my students is to center yourself. Let's get focused. Let's get focused on the breath. Let's take these breathing exercises. And I do them myself when I go to uh, an audition just to get my nerves together and say, what is my intent today? It's not to... Uh, please the uh, panel, of course, yes, it is to please the panel. But my focus is really to connect with my audience, connect with my breath, connect with my story. And I believe that Dorothy Maynard connected with this story, connected with the focus of this is going to happen because this is what uh, my purpose is. And that is my focus my purpose, and she connected with that breath. I mean, how many times can you imagine a woman of color heard no? How many times was a door closed? But she stayed focused on the prize, focused on the prize of the higher calling, as we say in church, to stay focused. Um, and a lot of times, um, young people come into my studio and they say, oh my God, I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous. And I always say, focus, focus. Because when you're dealing with the clutter, you, you lose focus. And so it's very important to focus, focus on the breath. Okay. Focus. Um, the next thing that I like to talk about is determination. I believe that Dorothy Maynard was determined, determined 
to do what she needed to do. I don't think she knew all the answers, but her determination helped her in her quest. She did not accept the 100 no for the answer. She stayed focused and through that focus was determined to create this space for young people. And what she did is she got other people influenced. She spoke to her echelon of friends from Mr. Arthur Mitchell to uh, Suzuki to you name it, whoever she could, she would bring them all together to be uh, focused on the idea, the purpose. And she was determined. We have to be determined no matter what the circumstance, we have to be determined to get the end goal. And that's determination. I am determined. I am, de I am determined. That's the word. I am determined to do what I need to do. Um, a lot of times students come in and they say, oh, I can't do that. I can't sing that. That's too high. Oh, I don't know how to do that. And I don't know. And I said, no, no, no. And this is where I am determined to show the student that there's no such thing as I can't in the studio. There's no such thing as I can't. I'm working on something. I'm practicing. I'm working. Uh, but can't is not a word we use in the studio. You have to stay determined on your goal. And as, as you are determined, you will reach your goal. Okay. I love this next one. Perseverance. This is a tough word, even for me as an adult. The older you get, the more experiences you get, um, there's a lot of negativity that may come your way, but you have to persevere. You have to push that other word, P, push your way through. It doesn't matter. I believe that Dorothy Maynard said to her within herself, it doesn't matter that I'm a woman. It doesn't matter of this color of my skin. It doesn't matter that most uh, venues will not allow me to sing in them or our houses of theaters will not allow me to perform in them because of the color of my skin. I still have to persevere. And through her perseverance, she made a name for herself in Europe. She found her voice. Finding your voice is very important. And many times, you know, when I ask my students, I say, okay, well, what voice type are you? Are you soprano? Are you alto? Are you tenor? Are you baritone? I don't know. So finding your voice, we have to find our voice. And I did not um, particularly talk about that in the beginning of the title, but the title of this whole webinar for today is Finding Your Voice. And in order to find your voice, you have to be focused, you have to be determined, and you have to persevere. You have to stay in it. Um, perseverance, there's another P word that happens when you are working. Um, practice. Practice, practice, practice. And I have to tell you, even now, I do not like warming up my voice. I hate it because it just seems like it's repetitive over and over and over and over again. But I do it because I know the benefits that I get out of warming my voice up. Your voice is a muscle. Their vocal folds are muscles. And just like dancers have to stretch before they dance, the singers need to stretch the vocal folds just like that, the muscles. And so I want to do a couple of vocal warm-ups for you, and we're going to go pace ourselves through the scales. Oh, there's an another part. As a pianist, that was my first thing that I did in music was piano. And so second day, I didn't like it because the scales, you had to practice those scales. Da -da -dee 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 -dee. Yes. I said, oh my gosh. And so I decided I was gonna be a singer so I didn't have to play the scales. But then the solfege happened. 
do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. And I said, oh my goodness, I still have to do scales. Um, and so warming up the voice is like going up the scale. Okay, so we're gonna start on, for me, cause I am a mezzo soprano, alto. We're gonna start with, is that C? Okay, let's start with C. Okay, so I wanna do. Ah, and we're gonna go up. Ah, 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 keep going. Ah, 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 ah. And as you keep going, you're going to feel like some little cracks and things happening within your voice. And it's okay because that's the muscles warming up. You have to persevere through it. Well, I don't like the way it sounds. I don't like the way I look when I sing. All of those things. Get out of the clutter and persevere. Push through. Push through. Right? And then what we want you to do is going down. <laughs> You keep going. Remember to breathe. Get that low breath. Even lower. Lower. Ah, 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 two more. Ah, last one. Ah, yes, give yourself a hand. Wonderful, wonderful one. I hear some of you. I can actually hear some of you. So this is good. Good, good, good. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Charles Duke. Once again, we have to thank Mr. Charles Duke because he keeps us in pitch, okay, and in key. <laughs> um, and so once you put all of these things together, your focus, your determination, your uh, perseverance, then it will help you stay focused on your performance. Another P word, Bob. It's a lot of P's. Okay, it will help you with your performance. Your focus helps you with your performance. Your determination helps you with your performance and perseverance. How many times have I either cracked during a song, uh, lost my breath during a song, lost words during a song, um, may have wanted to faint <laughs> during a song and said, oh, this is horrible. I want to stop right now. I want to give up. And I tell my students, no, no, no. Once you start and you commit, you push through, you persevere. Do you think if Miss Dorothy Mayner didn't push through the nose, didn't push through the naysayers, didn't push through other people's negative thinking that we would be here? How many people may have said to her, you know what? I tried it and it didn't work out for me. We would not have Harlem School of the Arts if she did not persevere. So now it's our commitment to persevere, okay? Um, the other thing that I learned about Miss Maynard, um, she didn't have the money needed to build this space. So her determination and her perseverance, she sold her summer home just to get a down payment to the bank. How many people you know would sell their property for others? That's a big word. That's service. You're giving service. And that's what we do here at Harlem School of the Arts. We serve the community. We serve the students. We serve the parents. We serve the instructors. We serve one another. Service. And she persevered through it. And she sold her summer home just to have the down payment. And 
when she went to, I don't know how many banks, I want to say it was three or four, it may have been five or six banks that said, nope, we can't do this. Nope, we won't do this. One day, because she stayed focused, she went into the bank with the idea and saw it before she got in the bank that this was the day that the deal was going to close. And God would have it where an angel was a clerk at the bank. And this clerk says, uh, I, I, I love the idea. I love what you're doing in the community. Let me see how I can help. And that day she got what she needed. And it may not have been through him because he was just the mindset. She connected with his mindset that then connected with somebody else's mindset and then the higher and higher and higher. And before you knew it, she received the money that she needed for this lot to build on this lot. I mean, what a mind, what focus did she have to say? Not only uh, it's not enough for me to have this uh, uh, institution in the basement. I want it in a, a arts, a uh, state of the art building. I want it in a state of the art building from, and I want to build it from the ground up. And we're going to have classrooms and we're going to have a performance space. Can you imagine? Perseverance. And her perseverance led us to this space, Harlem School of the Arts. And what a beautiful building it is. Just spectacular. Um, I remember many years, I, I did not have the honor of meeting Miss Maynard, but I came here as a student uh, at Manhattan School of Music, where I studied under Miss Betty Allen, who was the uh, first president of Harlem School of the Arts, where Miss Maynard actually, uh, thank you, where Miss Maynard actually uh, asked her to be the president of the school because again, her service, her heart was connected with the vision and the mission of Dorothy Maynard. And so that's how I learned about Dorothy Maynard was through Miss Betty Allen studying at uh, Manhattan School of Music. And she herself um, has accolades and have uh, so many firsts. Um, and she's a part of that uh, first generation of Black opera singers that actually achieved wide success and was singing at uh, with the New York Philharmonic. Matter of fact, Miss Betty Allen was handpicked by Leonard Bernstein to perform many pieces at uh, or with the New York Philharmonic. Um, and so she uh, did operas as well. Um, she got to sing abroad, and then she decided to give back to community. And not just the Harlem community, uh, Miss Allen uh, taught at North Carolina School of the Arts and a lot of, and brought a lot of those students to New York to experience Harlem and the Harlem School of the Arts. Um, and so, you know, her career blossomed, and then once she decided to kind of settled down, she gave back to community through arts education. Um, and this building was finished in 1979. So Miss Dorothy Maynard did not even get to be a part of this building because she was dealing with her own ailment at, at this point and asked Miss Betty Allen to take it over in 1979. So can you imagine all of that focus, determination, vision, perseverance, and then not being in the space that you envision. Wow, that's a lot, right? A lot. Um, and so at um, Manhattan School of Music, I learned about Harlem School of the Arts through Miss Betty Allen because on Saturdays, she would have what's called her uh, master classes with Betty Allen, master classes with Betty Allen. And um, that's how I learned about this place. Mind you, I went to high school 10 blocks from here at Music and Art 
and never knew about Harlem School of the Arts until I started college and was exposed to Miss Betty Allen. So it's just, again, service, connecting with service, connecting with service. And now I myself am having a full circle moment where I am now giving back to community. Um, the good part about Harlem School of the Arts is it's not just for the Harlem community now. It, we have expand our reach to Brooklyn, Queens, Lower Manhattan, Upper Manhattan, Jersey. And during the pandemic, one of the things that was positive that came out of the pandemic was that HSA could now spread its brand to California, Florida, uh, Virginia, and as far as London, England shedding, sharing our brand of excellence in the arts training. Excellence in the arts training. So um, I want to go back to Ms. Maynard and I want to take a moment, um, if I can, and let you hear this beautiful soprano. Um, her voice was wonderful. I mean, she was the first of so many things. Um, the first to sing for president inauguration. Um, she was the first black woman to be on the board of the Metropolitan Opera, the same place that she couldn't sing herself. Isn't that amazing? The same place that said, no, she was now on their board. Um, so I'd like to connect with um, the YouTube clip of Miss Maynard uh, singing. And let's take a listen. I asked if I might make the next introduction. You will never walk alone from Rogers and Hammerstein's play Carousel. Will be sung for us now by Miss Dorothy Maynard. <laughs>
Thank you so much. We have to give homage to our sound and lighting, Mr. Don Holder, Don Juan Holder, for helping us out here, because I am not that technically savvy. So we thank you, Don Juan Holder, for helping us out. Um, I just wanted to say one thing, one point that I remembered. You see how beautiful Miss Mayna was? Uh, but she was only like five feet two. She was not a tall, statuous woman. She was small in stature, but yet big heart, big in her uh, perseverance. She, she, I mean, she really was the sergeant of arms, you know, here at Harlem School of the Arts. Um, and so um, this is a, the building. This is us. And we have changed a little bit just so now when people pass um you know the era the community has changed and so we don't really need to have as much guard up we want the community to see the mystique what's happening behind those walls at Harlem School of the Arts what is happening so much is happening so now we have a glass wall where you can look in and see our students perform uh go to classes. Um, we encourage everyone to continue to enroll their kids into classes, whether it's in dance, theater, music, or visual arts. Um, and, you know, each chair, we, we are passionate about each of our uh, departments. And if you have any questions or concerns, please look us up. We have Mr. Leland Simmons um, with dance, our chair of dance. We have Mr. A.K. Lovelace, our Chair of Media and Design. We have Ms. Mercedes White, our Chair of Theater. And I am Yolanda Wins, your Chair of Music. Thank you so much for being a part of this webinar. Now, I cannot end a lesson without reviewing. I always review at the end of the lesson just to make sure you were listening. Okay? So... The first thing is you have to be focused, focused on your breath, focused on your intent, focused on your purpose. Then you have to be determined, determined to win. No matter what, I am determined to win. And then persevere, push, push, push through it. And you will have a great outcome. I have two questions for you sure. um, in regards to what you just shared with us today. Um, the first question, who are you listening to right now in terms of music? Oh, um, will you believe I'm not listening to any uh, vocalists? I'm actually just listening to meditation music um, to keep me focused. Um, to keep me connected with my breath because there are times when, you know, we're still in a pandemic. And so uh, I find myself uh, losing my breath, um, not connected with my breath. And so I will do meditative music. Um, if I had to choose a vocalist, the, the latest vocalist has been C.C. Winans. Um, which has been the goodness of God and just focusing on not what is not happening in my life, but focus, for focusing on what is happening in my life. Every morning when I wake up, I thank God for the breath of life. And I thank God for my family. I thank for the, just the simple things. And before I know it, it's just accumulating more and more thankfulness, gratefulness. Thank you so much for that. And and my last question, it's it's pretty broad in scope. Um, so by all means, feel free to dissect it if you'd like to. When you think about young people who may be pursuing music or or voice as a career, what what is one word of advice that you would give to them? What is one word? One word of advice, or or I, I won't limit you to a word, but 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 what are some some tools or tokens I can take from this? First of all the subject of this webinar is finding your voice. Mm -hmm. And my advice is everybody has a voice. 
It may not be the voice that everyone wants to hear, but you have a voice. You have something inside of you that wants to express itself. And as I said, in my studio, there's no such thing as can't. I'm working on something. I'm persevering and I am determined to do my best in everything that I do. Um, whatever it is, because we have students here at HSA that come here for the arts, but a lot of them do not continue with careers in the arts, but they are great leaders. And so we build leaders, people that believe that they can do it, that they can be a part of a committee, that they can, uh, like I think of Jamani Williams, his story, you know, being where he is out of this space as a theater major, you know? And so everybody has a voice, everybody has a say. And if you just connect with your purpose, you'll be fine. Yolanda, thank you so much. Um, you're an absolute diva, uh, amazing voice. Again, I have heard you sing before, but I have not experienced the full on force of, of your vocal talents and your register. Um, thank you again. Thank you again. And thank you all for joining us today. Uh, this recording will be shared amongst those who registered, and you'll also be able to find it on the HSA website. Until next time, bye.